Hey everyone, and welcome to module two of the Django REST framework course. Today, we'll be building our first app and creating a couple of endpoints. So let's jump straight into it. Okay, and welcome to module two. So last video, intro, very lightweight, got the code on our local machine. Today, we're gonna to be building our first app and endpoint. Before I do, however, if you wouldn't mind, just drop me a like and adding a comment, subscribing and clicking the bell. Every time I add a video, you will then be notified. So that's that out of the way. If you look on my screen here, this is VS Code. You can see I have mine open in the DRF underscore course directory that we started in the last video. And as with the last video, we have steps. And we're now in module two. Click in preview, because we don't want that normal language. This is the module two markdown language. I won't drone on about this. Like I said, it's a step-by-step -step guide of what we're going to be doing. Okay, so let's scroll past all of this. Your directory setup should look like that. If in doubt, pull down the right um, branch. Let's go ahead. So Django makes it easy to build better apps quicker with less code. I've done a Django course, so let's not dwell on that. In this module, we'll be creating the Django app for our project and we'll have two applications we'll have one called core and we'll have one called e-commerce i haven't even touched on this yet right so we're going to create a few endpoints right so one endpoint is going to be a contact us endpoint so you can send a full name an email and a message we'll take that information and we'll save it into a database okay so nice and easy and another endpoint or another app with endpoints we e-commerce where we will have an items and an orders endpoint. So you can check out what items we have in the shop and you can place orders, okay? So it's kind of similar to what you'd probably be doing in your own API, okay? So you can take this code and refactor it, slot it straight into your app. Okay, we'll have two applications in our projects. The first will be core, which I just touched on. The second will be e-commerce. Let's start core. So with this code, you can copy it. Just trying to make it. I normally have the text that are much smaller. I can see much more of my VS Code if I'm not doing any videos. So it's a little bit clunky rearranging stuff. But my big fat head is in the bottom right of the screen. And I need to make sure that when I'm dumping things in, it doesn't look like that. Okay. So yeah, bear with me. Um, so what we'll be doing here is we'll be calling, make sure your uh, virtual environment is fired up. You can see mine is to do that. Um, you would need to in the last video in module one you've got a command it just fires up the virtual environment if you don't it won't inst it won't create the app okay because we're referencing manage.py right in fact this won't work it won't work because we're referencing a file that's in back end okay so in back end we've got this manage.py file we need access to that to call manage.py so cd back end okay and then we will dump in that code what that then does, it calls the manage.py file and then it calls the function start app or command start app and it calls that app core. And as soon as you call that command, it opens up, it creates this little directory. It comes straight out the box with migrations. Migrations are basically modules converted into SQL, there or thereabouts. Um, you've got an admin py, this is where you register models to. Um, Django admin, you've got an apps file, this is where you register signals and things like that. Models, models convert to SQL, thereabouts. Test.py and views.py, that's straight out of the box, okay? Brilliant. Let's go CLS. CLS just clears it so that you can see a lot more on the screen. Uh, go back to my, sorry, let's close some of these down. Okay, so two, settings. We need to spend some time in the settings file, okay? So to install Django REST Framework, you first need to pip install the project. We did that in module one. It's all in the requirements file, which is here. Okay, we've installed it. So now we can you can follow along from DjangoRestFramework.org how to install Django REST Framework, or you can just follow along with this because I've taken their instructions and I've refactored it for this project, right? So we need to do a couple of things. So first thing we want to do in a settings file, we want to take this code. Want to go in DRF course, go into settings.py. And we want to just change this first bit from path lib import path. So rather than that, 
do you know what? I'm going to take all of that out as well. We want path lib import path, but we also want to bring in load.env. What that's doing is it's activating python.env um, and it then allows us to access the environment variables that are within this file here, .env, amongst other ENVs, right? So any environment variables you've got on a local machine plus what's in the .env file. Okay, that's what we're doing there. Nothing more fancy than that. Next, we want to replace a few variables. We want to replace the secret key, the debug, and allowed hosts with secret key, debug, and allowed hosts, which are within here. So we'll be now pulling through debug, secret key, and Django allowed hosts from this. Back in a settings.py. So you want to delete the secret key stuff, delete the debug stuff, delete the allowed host stuff, host stuff. And you want to paste in what we've just got there and save. Brilliant. Back to the MD. Installed apps, right. Okay, so what we now need to do is we need to change our installed apps variable. So some of this is already built in when you start a project. And we want to add Django extensions. Oh, sorry, I do apologize. I have a habit of clicking when you don't need to. If I click on anything in a preview, it actually then opens up the actual file and it's a pain. Um, let's close these down. Django extensions is one of the packages that we installed in requirements. Django extensions gives us access to a whole bunch of abstract models. This is not a Python course. This is not a Django course. These abstract models just gives us access to fields such as status, um, created. What else do we have? We have title, description, okay? And they're really, really powerful. And it just means a lot less code to get a lot more output. That's why we're doing it. Django filters, we need that with Django REST framework. And now Core. Core, oh, sorry. Core is the app that we've just created, okay? So let's copy all that, copy. Go back in our settings file, go back in installed apps, paste and save. Okay, so what have we done? Change this bit at the top, we've changed secret key debug and allowed hosts, and we've changed installed apps. Now we need to add some bits and pieces specifically for Django REST framework. So this whole bit here, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to dump it in settings right at the bottom. You can put it anywhere really, but right at the bottom. Save, and let me just remove that. So I'm gonna get it all in the screen. Can you see that? Hopefully you can read that okay. There we go. That's perfect. So um, with Django Restaurant, we need to create a dictionary with some key value pairs. Those key value pairs are kind of settings that REST framework uses for your particular setup of your API. Okay, so in here we've got exception handlers. We've got a default parser class, okay? Default renderer classes. We don't need to go through each and every one of these. Please look at the docs um, about what each and every one of these does. This is kind of straight out of the box type setup. And if you go on DjangoRestFramework.org, they show you this exact setup. Um, we'll be adding to this. Um, so we've got test request default format here you've got. Um, this just means that the, com the, the setup of Django REST Framework for the application is all configured within this dictionary. Now, if you've got specifics that you want for your app, such as token authentication, that's where you add it, okay? If you've got certain permissions that you wanna to add to this, such as whitelisting servers or IP addresses, that, this is where you add it, okay? So this is really important that you get the dictionary in your settings file and you use it to really tailor your REST API experience, all right? This is straight out of the box, so we don't need to go through much of this. Save, go back to preview mode. Okay, so we've done the settings. Don't need to do any more in the settings just yet. But what we do now need to do, we need to create a URL, okay, routers. So URLs are a clean and elegant URL scheme. Oh, sorry, a clean and elegant URL scheme is important detail of a high quality web app, okay? So this is kind of out of the box with Django and DRF extends on that, okay? So what we need to do is to create um, or update the URL conf file in our project with this following code. So urls.py, 
what you can do is just replace all of that with what, what we've got here, okay? So what we use in Django REST Framework is something called routers, okay? So it has a built-in router. Now you can extend on that and have a bespoke router, um, and that router will, you can do whatever you want with the extension of the router, to be fair. Um, it helps you um, when using things like view sets, it, um, when you're doing a retrieve uh, of a certain database entry with a bespoke um, router, you can start adding things like primary keys and slugs rather than just looking for a primary key. Okay, but we're just using the default router, which when we're using a retrieve in the view set, it's looking for a primary key. Okay, and this is how you configure the default router in the URL conf. You don't need to do any more than that. Now, our URL patterns for our Django app still look like this. So we extend, we now, URL patterns is now an extension of routers.urls. So we're now capturing all the URLs within the router. And then we extend it. Now you don't need to do this because you don't necessarily need the admin page accessible. But I like to keep this admin page in there, when, especially when I'm debugging. Okay, so this is what a URL conf file now looks like. Four, migrations. So to make our app work, we need to migrate straight out of the box applications that come with Django and any models that we, we create as part of our application. You use that with these, but you do that with these two commands. Back in your terminal, make sure you got your virtual env fired up, which I have. Sorry, let me just, there we go. If I drop that in here, oh, it went like that. Okay, you need to be in backend. Whenever you're calling manage.py, just cd in a backend. Okay, drop that in there. It's creating migrations, but it's saying, look, there are no changes. You haven't created anything else. But this one here will migrate everything, just kind of a quick, it will, cre it will migrate all of, you can't see the migration files because you haven't created any. So the migration files straight out of the box with things like content type, um, messages, authentication, things like that. There's a whole bunch of database tables that you need. So we migrate them to the database. Now what database are we migrating them to, I hear you ask. Well, in doing this, we're creating a DB SQLite 3 file. The reason it's creating that file is because of in our settings.py file, we have a database dictionary. Straight out of the box, it creates a db.sqlite3. You can upgrade to PostgreSQL, but that's really outside of this tutorial, or MySQL, okay? But we're using db.sqlite, and that's what is created there, okay? So that's our little database, essentially. Great, we expect to see this in the output, and if you go into the module, that will say exactly that. You're expecting to see something like this. It's migrating content types, auth, admin, other bits and pieces for auth, sessions. So we've now got those database tables in a database. Local server. So what we now need to do is fire up a very lightweight built-in server from Django. So if I put CLS, that should now fire something up. And it will say, look, if you visit 127.0.0.1 8000, port 8000, it will render something in the browser. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I've right, uh, sorry, I've kept control and clicked the 127. So it's just opened up a browser and there you go. This is what it should look like. This is exactly what we're looking for. So um, this is one of the uh, great things about Django REST framework. Uh, it's a, it's a, a web a API. And because of the way we configure the, the routers and, and what have you, you can actually make some simple get requests straight here in the browser, which is really, really good, really, really helpful. Okay, so that's it. So very, very slow moving at this present moment. We haven't done too much fancy stuff. Um, we have just set up a project in module one. We've now configured Django REST Framework. So essentially we've installed it all. We've got the dictionary, Django REST Framework dictionary in our settings. So our, incent, our instance of Django REST Framework is now working straight, like straight out of the box. That's default stuff, right? Um, we're now ready to start doing some um, endpoints. Your configuration, your directory configuration should look something like this. So just pause, have a look, make sure you've got everything where it needs to be. 
before we move on to the next module. Assuming that you have, so, but before you go, if you could just drop me a like and comment, subscribe and click the bell. So every time I add one of these videos, you're notified. It really helps me create these courses. And um, yeah, it, uh, if you help me, I can carry on doing this. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next module. Bye-bye.